guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in and if you are new here my name is chris hong and i'm an artist and this is my youtube channel where i make art related videos so in today's video i decided i'm going to do some portrait studies using markers and i really want to challenge myself to really have a lot of fun with colors and approach them a little bit in a more creative slash spontaneous way so i already went ahead and drew these three portraits out to save on time because we're just going to focus on the coloring portion today and yeah i don't want to shoot myself in the foot but i am really hoping that i end up liking these portraits in the end because i plan on including them in my upcoming portrait art book um, I plan on releasing this portrait art book by the end of the year. So hopefully this session goes over well. And without further ado, let's get started. So here's our first portrait. Um, I'm just gonna talk about how I think I will approach this, but I feel like once I get into actually working with it, things might change. I might have to switch gears. But I think with this one, I want to start out by laying down the shadows because I feel like I can clearly see the shadows here and I think that's going to help give us the structure for the portrait. Um, and I think I'm gonna go with a like bright pink for the shadow color. Okay, so because it's a shadow color, I can afford to go a little bit dark. So one thing to note when I'm picking these colors, I want to avoid um, picking colors that feel a little bit too neon or like fluorescent because I have to bear in mind that I want to include these in my book and I have to make sure that the colors will reproduce fairly um, true to life and neon colors are notoriously just very difficult to scan and they just like don't pick up very well so i have to kind of be careful with more neon -y colors i do want like a bright bright color maybe that'll be okay as long as it's not highlightery right so before i go in with the marker i'm gonna take a kneadable eraser and pick up the excess graphite a little bit because i'm noticing that i'm smudging it with my hand Okay, so I'm gonna go in. I think the easiest one is the shadow on the nose here. Yeah, I may regret this because color might not pick up very well in the scan, but maybe I'll do such a good job that it doesn't matter that the color's not super accurate because it's being held up by the values. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going over uh, the clearly darker areas with this color to start. That'll provide us with the structural foundation for the portrait. Go away, cat! Oh. You guys can't see this on screen, but oh, there we go. My cat Oscar loves to visit me at the most inopportune times. And once he starts doing this and I try throwing him off the desk, he like sees it as a challenge and attempts over and over again until I just give in. So he's still on here. Oh, no. As long as he's not playing around with the camera, or the camera stand. I can work with this. Oh, and I kind of want to switch to the chisel tip. You know what? I'm gonna switch to the chisel tip. Yeah. I like the more like hard edges that I can get with the chisel tip. Even though sometimes I feel like I have less control with it than just like the brush tip. But let's get the shadow under the brow bone. And I kind of have an idea of how I want to treat um, inside the glasses. Uh, 
I think I want to use like a different color for the shadows in there. What color should I make the glasses? Um, okay, so I think inside the glasses, I, I kind of want to make the glasses um, like a minty or like a turquoisey color. Yeah, I kind of want to make her eyes look very just like brightly illuminated by the glasses. Maybe that's too dark. I think definitely I want lighter color in the glasses. Let's just go for it. I think I'm gonna start by just blocking the whole eye, but leaving the white of the highlight. But ooh, I like the idea of a strong reflection on the eye, because I feel like the the unique thing about this reference is her eyes. I kind of try to exaggerate the shape of the eyes in my drawing. They look a little cat-like to me. I'll start with that, but I'm gonna actually bring in a different color. Um, maybe a little bit green. Bring in this green now. Hopefully this will read after all is said and done. I already want to uh, retract my comment about wanting to do a good job on these because I plan on including them in my book. I'm really not sure anymore if that's going to happen, but maybe I will surprise myself. I'm just darkening, darkening the value on the eye. I want to make that iris feel kind of reflective. So I'm leaving the bottom part light. I'm going to try to fill in the, the rest of the skin a bit more. I'm gonna have to find a lighter pink than the one we use for the shadow. So, yeah, actually that one will work. Mm, yeah, let's just go for it. Okay. So, for the nose. This is like my favorite part, which is to always leave this little highlight on the ball of the nose. I think I kind of messed up the shadow here. I should have left a little bit. Ah, <sighs> c'est la vie. I'm working up this way because I know the darkest parts are going to be where I start making the marks and I'm doing it this way because I want to kind of indicate a slight um, darkening here um, for the cheek so that's why I'm working dark to light that way Oscar's back Honey! All right, you need to get off. Here you go. Thank you. Actually, so before before I go in and fill out the skin here, I think I'm going to do something kind of weird with this green color that we use for the glasses and make some kind of funky shapes kind of coming up from the glasses to kind of make it look as if there's like well, I don't really know how to explain it, but like some kind of like light effect on the glasses and on the portrait. Um, and just like shapes breaking out of the glasses to make it more interesting. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully I don't regret <laughs> this decision, but let's go for it. Something like that. Hmm. Yeah, hmm, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see how this looks later. Like that. Anyway, ah, I think that's kind of fun. Okay. And then I'll go in and fill out the rest of the skin. And I'm going 
going to not uh, overlap those because I want them to feel kind of light. I'm gonna try my best to not overlap those. I wanna kinda keep the valleys here lighter, so I'm going to work up this way with my marker from this area. So now there's like this kind of rounded uh, modeling on the forehead, which is what I want. So now I'm gonna bring in some bright orange color to just punch up some of the warmer areas um, in the shadow of the skin where we see some subsurface scattering effect. Yeah, these are probably not gonna scan well, but I, I like that. That really pops. I wanna add some here. Yeah, I feel a little bit rushed because I oh, I do have dinner plans later and I don't want to be like that. Yeah, picking colors takes so long. I wish I could just instantly know what color things are. Oh, it's feeling extremely neon. But I find that a lot of these apply neon at first, but then they do settle down. So let's hope. Okay, so I need to pick color for the glasses. Ooh, I love that. Okay, so I'm gonna use, oh, do I use a chisel tip? I feel like chisel tip will leave a cleaner look, but I'm not as confident about it. But it will feel crispier, you know? I'm not gonna close the gap completely all around. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a little thicker than I would like. Ugh, maybe I just used the brush more to refine the shape. Oh, this is kind of fun. I, I was able to kind of achieve the effect I was going for. What? Mommy's working here. Oh, I think I made a mistake. Hopefully that dries lighter. I didn't really mean to do that. I meant to go in with this. Oh, I got all flustered. Because of you, honey. Yeah, I have Oscar trying to climb me right now you can't see it because it's not on the screen but that's what i'm dealing with he's a tenacious little boy aren't you you're so tenacious okay for the hair and the eyebrows i'm seeing a like a purple okay i'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the hair with this purple that we use for the glasses And I am using the chisel tip because I like how uh, I can follow the the form of the hair, and it kind of makes it look like hair from the overlapping of the the lines that I'm putting down. Pull out some of the hair around the hairline. Okay. I like having some colors really just stand on their own like that. Like I like seeing this like patch of orange and then patch of pink instead of mixing everything all the time. this and darken this area. 
there's a bit more roundness of that cheek. I'm gonna go in to make a subtle shape around this nose here. Okay, maybe I'm pushing, pushing it a bit much. Maybe I should drop it now. I'm gonna stop before it's too late. So I'm really liking how this is looking so far. I think I'm gonna bring in my purple ballpoint pen and just kind of punch up the drawing a little bit in certain areas. And I think this one might be finished. I don't want to go overboard because I really like how this is looking as it is. Just give it like a cleaner silhouette. I definitely shouldn't start rendering with it. Really, really shouldn't. Very much possible that I might start doing that. <laughs> Maybe just indicate the eyebrow hairs. And just selectively pick out parts of the frame. jumping all over the place, but just trying to uh, draw how I would normally draw. So I guess I end up jumping all over the place when I do that. I really like the eyes. I'm glad I took a chance on the eyes and did something kind of risky. I'm just gonna go over the glasses a little bit more. This area is kind of bothering me. Do I want to darken it? But I don't want to go too dark because I want to keep the forehead lighter than the lower half of the face. So I think I might just leave it. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this one for now. I might come back to it after I fold out the rest of the page um, if I have time before my dinner plans tonight. But I think I'm going to move on to this next one here. So we're gonna work on our second portrait now. Unfortunately, as you can see, I smudged this one as I was working on the first one. Um, but I think I can still make out the drawing well enough. So my vision for this one is I really wanna have fun bringing out the subtle forms of the face and the, and the features. And I really want the color palette to be kind of pastel colors, uh, as opposed to like really bright, strong colors that I use on this one and like a really strong contrast. But I also want to use like lots of colors instead of just going from a gradient of like a light peach to a, like a darker peach. I want to kind of do like a patchwork style of different colors. I'll try to show you what I mean when I get into it. Uh, let's see, what should I start with? So I think I'm gonna start out by blocking this eye. I don't know, I don't wanna think too much about this one. I'm just gonna go for it even though I can hardly see what's going on at this point. Oh wait, I already kind of forgot to like use multiple colors. <laughs> um, let me just pick out a different color so I don't forget. Um, so it has to be this kind of like light range of color. Again, it kind of almost doesn't matter what color I use, but I'm gonna go in with uh, this like orange color for the eyebrow. Uh, let's find a purple. I do want to use a purple. Okay, I'm just gonna use this. So I really don't know how this one's gonna go. This one's a bit of a 
an experiment. But basically I'm working in like, as I'm working as if I'm putting together a quilt. So working in patches of color instead of layering the colors over top because that's going to muddy up the colors and I want to preserve the chroma of the colors uh, as much as possible. There he comes again. Mr. Oscar. He just won't leave me alone. I deserve a medal for working in these conditions, honestly. I don't know how I manage. He's right here. And he's sitting on my arm too. Mm-hmm. That's Oscar. Oh, this is fun though. This is probably gonna take me a while. Maybe in the shadow area, I do keep it kind of simpler because I want the attention to be here. And I want to create that like separation between this side and that side. Use the blues there. a lighter blue than this. This is the mint blue. And yeah, maybe I keep it less saturated as well. So again, I'm gonna try to not overlap these shapes because I don't want to create unnecessary edges by, you know, overlapping these shapes. Yeah, okay. Because I am working in this way, I have to be really intentional about the shapes that I'm making. Mm -hmm. Going with purple for the shadow shape under the ear. Pink for inside the ear. anatomy because I have several ear piercings. Hopefully this doesn't look like a patchy mess once I'm done. Okay, I need to figure out how to deal with this like vast, the vast areas. Mating to go in with the blue again for the forehead. I need to create a, a smooth transition for the forehead somehow. Or maybe some blending is okay. You know what? It's my portrait. Maybe some blending <laughs> is allowed. Maybe it doesn't all have to be patches, you know? bring up this eye a little bit. It's looking a little, a little cray cray right now. Put a shadow under the neck. But yeah, I'm really liking how this is looking so far. I think it's really fun. 
I feel like there must be a term for working in this kind of method. I think it might be like in oils, it might be called the, like the tiling method. You're like filling out little by little and not really going over it again. I believe that is what it's called. But again, I really like working this way because it's a great way to preserve the color and have the individual colors stand out. I know a lot of people hate this area of their face, this like jowly area, but I love bringing out the jowl <laughs> personally in drawing. I love it. Um, trying to decide the color for that cheek, maybe just the pink, and maybe a, a large shape. Let's have faith, trust the process. Trust the process, she said. And gradually have it get more desaturated because we're starting pretty saturated here. I always like to try to create some kind of gradient and some sense of order so it looks less chaotic. I do a good job. Oh, ouch. Paper cut city. I'm gonna use this pink to make this shape here. Um, just trying to figure out how to best approach the hairline shape. Kind of reminds me of the the body world exhibit where they like it's the exhibit where they um showcase the human body um underneath the surface <laughs> this portrait is actually just reminding me of that um which i'm not sure if that's a good thing yeah, maybe i refrain from using the chisel tip there okay i think i'm just gonna fill in the rest leaving the white um, in certain areas, but basically just filling in the gaps at this point. And maybe make the hair look bit more like hair.
I think it's got some merit to it. Guaranteed someone's gonna say it's their favorite. I think it would have also been more successful if I stuck to just the, um, just a handful of colors or like stuck to colors in the same color family. But I don't know, I kind of like it too. I think, yeah, the part that bothers me the most is just this area here. But other than that, I, I see the potential. I'm gonna try to break up these two shapes a little bit by going back in. I don't even know if this is the same color, but creating a little break up shape like that. And maybe another small one? No, I'm gonna leave it there. Stop, should have stopped. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah, okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so my vision for this one is I wanna establish some kind of a gradient and then I will apply the shadow shapes over top of that. So in my mind, I think it'll actually be rather simple um, because the the shadow shapes in this one are fairly like well laid out, I think. Uh, I think it'll be fairly straightforward, fingers crossed. And I'm thinking of maybe doing some kind of a sunset effect. So like a warm, pinky, purpley, orangey color, because it feels like a sunset type of vibe, you know? like very 70s. That is the vision. I am not certain it's gonna work again. I'm not certain, but we'll see. All right, so I'm just gonna knock down the drawing of the hair a little bit. It's a little bit too. Should I start out with my dark colors or should I start with the light color? Probably light. Let's go light to dark. I think it'll be wise to pick out all the colors first for ease of blending so again what i'm gonna do is create a gradient uh, here we go it's gonna look really funny for a long time <laughs> until i probably start working on the shadow the shadow shapes and I, you know, I don't know if this was the best way to start the gradient. And I don't really know where to end. But here we are. Maybe, maybe I should have used a chisel tip instead. All right, well, there's our first layer. <laughs> maybe, maybe the chisel tip instead. Okay. Yeah. Again, I'm not minding the shadows, the highlights. I'm just trying to create a gradient at this point. Oh, I really like this color. And I like where this color is falling on the face. Okay, and then we're gonna go. Kind of flipped because this is more pink than that, but uh, whatever. I'm giving up on the part where I said even gradient. <laughs> I don't think that's possible for me. I never learned how to blend markers very seamlessly. Um, I don't really use a blender. I have a blender. Maybe I should pull that out. I honestly don't mind when you can see all these edges. I do mind it here though. <laughs> so maybe a sign that I should pull out that blender, but I've never used it. So I don't really know how that's gonna go. I'm telling you I'll be able to distract you from all these lines once I start plopping in the shadows. I'm fairly confident. You know, that looks a little better, but I need to get rid of the banding up here. 
I think working on the features, it'll help. <laughs> and then I'll like fill in the gaps like of the really egregiously patchy areas as I go. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same colors that I used in this sunset. I'll start anyway with that. Jump around a little bit. But I'm already kind of seeing the vision coming together. What about you guys? Yeah, I'm gonna go in a light color. Yep. Put this darker shadow here. Oh, that feels good. Carving that eyelid out. Yeah. Going in with a purple for the eyebrow. Oh, you returned to grace us with your presence. <laughs> I'm like already so tempted to use colors outside of the colors I've used for the base, which is not good because that's gonna get messy. So I really need to stick to the colors that I've already used. I need to stay strong. Uh -huh. It's like sitting on me. And for the eye, I'm using the same color. Mm, I'm not going in with like a black or anything. I don't know, I'm feeling pretty good about where this is headed. Yeah, I feel like going in, refining the rendering is allowing me to cover up some of the patchy areas. So again, I'm just going in and filling out those shadow shapes that I see. I'm using a color that I used in the base to make it feel very cohesive. Um, and then I'll see later what I have to do to make this feel more finished. But for now, that's really all I'm doing. color. Uh-oh. But now I'm going into this um, part of the hair. Uh, this like dark part of the hair here to really uh, make or give that hair shape some sense of form and like roundness to it. I think I'm running out of this marker but I'm gonna use it to its advantage and Maybe pick out some of that hair texture while it's not so stark. Ooh. That, ooh. You know what? I'm gonna go out of the shape intentionally there. I don't want the hair to be too distracting because I want, again, the focal point to be on the face. I want the hair to just very nicely frame the face and be kind of a clean shape within the hair. I have to go in with the deeper purple now. I'm just bringing in some 
Well, I don't know if I really like what I'm doing, but I've already committed, so defining the outer texture a little bit, just a little. And then I'm gonna go in with this darker shadow color. And I'm kind of fanning it out like this because I think it helps reinforce the sunset symbolism or imagery um, to have kind of lines radiating out from the face. Instead of using purple all the way around, I think I'm gonna gradate to a bright like pink instead. Yeah. Try to create some texture a little bit. Not too much, not too much. Notice how I'm kind of concentrating the hair texture around this area because I feel like that's where I see it in the photo and I always try to kind of relegate the texture to one area so it doesn't feel too busy all over the place. Yes, quick while I'm ahead. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That would be wise. That would be wise. I'm tempted to go around the hair and clean up the silhouette, but I'm also worried that it's going to look too stark, so I don't think I will. Let me stop there. Probably. Okay. Yes. Yes. Stop here. Okay, for real now. I have to get ready. <laughs> Down. Okay, so here's how all three portraits came out. I'm pretty pleased with this little exercise in pushing my comfort zone with colors and being a little bit more adventurous with the markers. I would love to know which one is your favorite of the three. I think my favorite, honestly, even though I'm not super happy with the cheek part here, I actually really like the effect of this one. So I'm really curious to explore that one further. Um, I, I think I would have pushed this one a little bit further had I had more time to work on it, but I've got to run. I hope you guys look forward to my portrait book that's coming out later in the year. I'll definitely be giving more information as I go along and things are a bit further along in the process. So stay tuned for news on that. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed watching this video and let me know if you like videos like this. I'll definitely keep making more uh, when time permits. So with that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!